morning guys, it's Johnny Parks, also known as Frost of Fires. Today I have the Pi SP that I made. This is the world's smallest portable Raspberry Pi. Um, basically it's using the Odroid chip called the Odroid W. Um, these chips actually went out of stock not too long ago. I'm pretty sure. They said that they're they're making a different type of chip now because they weren't allowed to use the same um, system on a chip anymore. Well anyways a Raspberry Pi is usually the size of a credit card so in order to fit a Raspberry Pi inside of this I had to use the clone chip which is the Odroid. Um, if you haven't checked out the backman.co.uk forms yet you should. You can see all kinds of different uh, posts and portable updates on all kinds of different cool stuff. Alright, so I'll give you guys a quick detail of everything. Here's the A and B button, normal controls here. However, I did add a 3DS joystick, so which actually controls the mouse inside the Raspberry Pi. I added two extra buttons, which were actually the two buttons for start and select. I just moved them up here. Um, I kept the the backlight button, but now instead of a backlight, it can count as a button in a game, and it also counts as the escape button. And then I added this last button over here, just because who knows? You never you never know when you need more buttons. Um, I have the HDMI out. We got the charging jack. We have volume down and up right here. On the back side we have two USB ports. These are 2.0 ports and it's connected to a hub inside and inside there's also, right here's the hub inside, there's a Bluetooth module and then the two ports are wired up to here and then the third USB, it's a four port hub, the fourth spot is hooked up to the Teensy 3.1 which controls all the buttons and joystick which is the mouse of course. These two are left click and right click L and R. And then on this side we have the screen buttons. We have the menu button up and down. And then right here is the, the power on and off. Um, this doesn't actually remove the cartridge slot. It's actually a cut up cartridge slot that I dremeled and made it look realistic. And so that's basically the highlights of it. It looks like a normal Game Boy Advance SP. I did put a 3.5 inch screen inside and the battery is 1,300 milliamps which lasts about two hours. Oh yeah and on the bottom there are two different switches. This one and this one. This switch is the Bluetooth, I'm not Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi module switch. You can turn it on and off if you want to save power. And then this is the screen switch so you can turn on and off the screen to save some power. Also it's good to turn off the screen when hooked up to the HDMI out. So I'll turn it on for you guys. And there's a mono speaker just normal output of sound. And here's it starting up. I'm using Ultimate Raspbian as the the file, the firmware I guess you could say or the operating system I mean. Alright. Now this is my first Raspberry Pi that I ever messed with. It's not the actual Raspberry Pi, of course, it's the Odroid, but it's an exact clone, so there's no difference. So here's the startup. You can go through all these different options. We have LXDE, which is a basic desktop. We have Quake 3 and XBMC, which is like a media player which is very neat. We have Nintendo Entertainment System, NES. We have, I never messed with this, PC X86. <clears throat> we have the Game Boy Color, which is pretty awesome. Game Boy Advance, which is my favorite. And Duke Nukem, Doom. I haven't messed with those two yet. Yet, I haven't messed with Cave Story yet either. Well, I'll show you guys some, some of the desktop features. Now I'm using A 
to click on things in the menu. However, on here I'm going to use the left click and the right click. See, right click, right click stuff. And then this is to move the mouse. I'll zoom out so you guys can see. See, it moves the mouse a bit. We have the right click and then le left click. Alright, so I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see if it focuses. There we go. So, we can go to the file manager and check out things inside there. Double click it. Alright, so you can see different files and mess with things. I have different um, audio files and things you can play. And well, we can test out an audio file. Let's try this one. Double click it, and then it should load up the XMBC. I think it is. I might have said that wrong. There you go. Let me turn the volume on. So. I don't know if it sounds that good on the video. I'll turn it down. Different apps you can do. I'll turn it down. But, yeah, that's basically that part. We can exit and go back to the menu, which is basically back to here. Um. You can also, with the USB ports, put in your own mouse, keyboard, whatever you want, which is fun. Um, I can use the internet too. Let's try out the, the Wi-Fi card. Um, I'll keep right-clicking. Let's go to the terminal. And then I'll flip the switch to turn on the Wi-Fi module, which you can see possibly the blue light in there, the Wi-Fi. Um, closing up this thing was a pain. Um, I had to put some extra epoxy down there just to keep it all perfect and not freaking out. So we'll go through my recent um, terminal stuff and look for the there it is this runs the Wi-Fi so there we go um, we'll do this one Netgear and make this there we go there we go you can see it says connected to Netgear and then we can go down to the internet. It's kind of hard to use the joystick sometimes on the browser. It's way better in Quake 3 using the mouse to move the screen. Sometimes the speaker gets a little crackly. Alright, so you can see the internet worked. We can type in stuff. We'll just well I, I mapped the buttons to be different letters so in game. So this one's an, a Z. It's hard to see. So that's a Z, this one's an X. So these are just mapped to letters. <coughs> so you can see I Googled Z X. Which is basically the internet working. Um then we can log out, which takes you back to this screen. Now, here's Quake 3, which I'm sure you guys have been waiting for me to put up. There you go, I turned the volume back up. So you can control it just by going up and down, or you can move the mouse. And select whatever you want just to get
get an idea of how the gameplay plus me pushing buttons look. I'll move it away for this part. So we'll just do the basic fighting a computer. I've been able to play one online game so far, but sometimes it gives you errors because not all the the maps are fully allowed. But, yep, you can see. It's very responsive. I can jump with A, shoot with this trigger. This one switches your weapon. We got B for crouching. Um, start, I don't think. Oh, that does something, I forgot. This one's another jump button. We have striking left and right. And then this one is the escape button. That one. The brightness. So it's good for exiting the game. But yeah. It's fun to kind of move around. You can mess around with this. I think the, the joystick makes it a little bit easier. I'm not that good. If I just hit that person directly. There we go. Got a kill. Um, it's a little bit hard to snipe with this with these controls. Um, I can use the plasma gun decently. The rocket launcher is not too hard since it's AOE damage. But yeah. Yeah, you get the point. It's, a, it's pretty fun. I'm not the best at Quick 3. It's a lot easier, maybe, for people that are used to the mouse. So you can hook up a mouse and play. But yeah, there's Quake. You can exit. Um, I don't want to make the video too long, but maybe we'll just play like a Game Boy Advance game or something. Um, we'll do like Mario Kart. Oops, start button. There we go. See, everyone likes Mario Kart. Do a quick game. I like Toad, he's fun. I was gonna put this Raspberry Pi decal right here, however, it was a little too big and I didn't want the system to not look like a like a a Game Boy anymore. I wanted to keep it to look kind of like an original Game Boy a bit. Alright. See if I can do all right. Well, I didn't get the boost. But. Yeah. Well, I'm not the best at Mario Kart. Probably save those for when I'm not turning a corner. Okay, second place right now. Third place. That's pretty good. Yeah, you guys get the point. And then to exit the game, you can just push the escape button here, and it exits. And I even have like, where's, I had my PlayStation emulator on here, PlayStation 1. Oh well, um, now I'll quickly show you, well I guess I'll end the video now and I'll edit and add in the second part of the video in a second. Alright, now I'll show you guys it hooked up to the HDMI out, and I'll show it playing a video and maybe a song or something. So we'll turn it on. Now since it's 
hooked up to the HDMI out, it won't project on this, this screen, but it will project on this one. So you can't have both screens going at once, but I think that's a good thing. Um, the switch on the back will actually save power if you turn off the, the screen switch, so the screen won't be on all the time. Otherwise, it'll just be a blank screen that's running power. Alright. Now, uh, on the last part of the video, when I was playing Mario Kart, it didn't show up too well on the screen, so it looked a little funky. But in real life, it looks a lot better. It's just the camera. I'm using a cell phone. It's not the best quality. So I'll turn up the sound a bit on the surround sound. It's a little bit messy in here, but it's alright. It gets the point. Alright, so we're on here. I'll show. Okay, go for start. Get to the videos. Um, go to files. Pi. And down here we have. The Amazing Spider Man. This one's a, actually a Blu ray. So we'll play this one. There we go. Take a second. Try to zoom in a little bit more. And it plays like a perfect little media player. It's great. What? Well, I've already watched this movie using the Pi, and it ran perfectly the whole time. You can leave it plugged in while it's hooked up to the TV too, so the battery won't die. It doesn't need to run on batteries then, so that's nice. It's all coming from this little guy. You can just tell the power's on with that. It's great. And you can exit out of there. And quickly just, there's Rio I have also. Um, there's actually a back button right here. You can go back with that. And we can go to music. Um, with the pie again, and then, here's a song, just play it, so you can play some music while I'm working on stuff, got my modding station over there, so, a little bit of soldering while I'm listening to music. Pretty good stuff. And that's the Raspberry Pi Portable, also known as the Pi SP. Thanks for watching, guys.